I took a break from the, uh, the castle to hop in with my friend and do some coding and revamp the inventory system again. Future, just it's it's the, like the third revamp of this inventory system. The whole thing's in color, and once again, I'm not I'm not using uh, textures. I'm just using materials for now. I might come back in and add some UV textures at some point, um, but for now, this this really wasn't necessary. Hello and welcome back to the UltraQuest devlog series. I hope you're all home and healthy. This whole coronavirus situation has been hitting hard. Both myself and my friend Vige are currently at home. Now, despite this, we've actually done a bit of work on UltraQuest during this time. And although we haven't been able to meet face to face, we've been talking on Discord instead and we've somehow managed to be productive nonetheless. In today's devlog, we're gonna be looking at three things. The revamped inventory system, some buildings for the city, and some initial user interface ideas. Let's start off with the inventory system. My friend Vige has been hard at work getting this up and running. You can now hover the mouse over items to see their name, stats and a tooltip. You can also see the quality or the rarity of the item by its color. The player is able to either drag and drop gear onto the corresponding slots on the character sheet from their inventory or simply right click to equip it. But please do ignore the icons, they are all very much placeholders. Furthermore, Vigi has made a saving system that lets the player equip gear, save the game and then have the same gear and stats equipped once the game is reloaded. This menu is opened by pressing escape, although it closes any other menus you might have opened at this time, so pressing escape can also simply close a page. Once again, the graphics here are placeholders and very temporary. I've been hard at work pumping out buildings for the city. I really struggled with getting the look right, so I found myself actually using UV textures and bubble maps in order to give the buildings more life and depth. However, this means that I'll have to bake the buildings before implementing them into the game, which is also why they're not in the files just yet, so you'll have to enjoy them through Blender. Since the last video, I've made a guard tower with a roof, a blacksmith, a mage tower and a tavern. Finally, we've been discussing the user interface for the game. As it is currently, all you have on the screen per default is your health, which is just displayed by a red number. Targeting an enemy will also bring up their name and health. And that's currently it. So I went ahead and created five different iterations on possible UI for the game, all following similar yet different design conventions and essentially made a PowerPoint presentation for Vige. Here are some of the initial sketches and final concept arts. If you have any feedback regarding these, or anything else shown in the video, please do leave a comment. Together we agreed on some stuff that worked, and some stuff that didn't, and I've come up with a final concept. So, in this rendition, you have the player portrait in the middle, with an XP bar surrounding it. You've got some abilities to the left and to the right of the player portrait, with the buffs and debuffs above it. Your target is displayed at the top center of the screen. You've got the minimap to the top right, with a button that opens the actual map itself. In the bottom left corner, you've got your chat, and in the bottom right corner, you got three buttons. Your talents, your inventory, and an escape menu for various other menus. Note that this is all subject to change, especially since this is just a concept done in Photoshop. The actual UI will be done by placing these elements in Unity, so we'll have a pixel-perfect result. Although this UI looks a lot better, we both agree that it's a bit too flat. I've currently been working on giving the various elements a bit more life. Notably, the target's border and the player's frame have been customized so far. The idea here is that they'll be tier-based, so that the tougher the enemy, the more menacing the border, and the further the player progresses, the more epic their player portrait will be.
All of this is also laying the foundations for our remembrance points and talent tree systems. We're nowhere near done with those though, but hopefully I'll have some more info to share about those in the future. The game is really starting to take shape, and although the central gameplay loop is still quite rough, the necessary elements are slowly but steadily being implemented. And now I'm actually excited about my character. Just wait till we add more armor and weapons. I hope you've enjoyed this quarantine devlog. Leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe and stay healthy. Thanks for watching.